morning everybody and welcome back to the Canning Nana. Here you'll see that I finally have my corn all done and ready to go into the pot and I'm going to walk you through how to can corn for one and then to make my famous corn cob jelly. Um, very easy to do. I have 15 ears of corn here. For corn cob jelly you only need 12 and we're going to cook the corn for three minutes and then cool it down and take it off of the cobs put it in a bowl and then I'll show you what to do from there so I have my water boiling with a little bit of salt in it and I'm gonna put all these babies right in there and they're gonna par cook because we're going to cook it once again corn is something that you have to be very careful on when you're canning it um, not many things get to the center of the corn. If you notice, not even the digestive system of ours breaks it down. So to get to the middle of the corn by pressure canning it, you have to go through a few processes first. So corn is one of those things that you want to be very careful on. It's easy, it's a very easy process, but you do want to do the entire process. You don't want to skip anything and you don't want to make shortcuts, not on corn. Okay, so here we go. So here you have the corn. You can see the corn um, that I am taking off of the cob with this, my handy dandy little corn cobber. And um, after this, we put it into this pot and break them up. I'm going to break them up and um, then add the water and show you from there what we do. Here's the rest of the corn I have to do. <clears throat> and here's... So, I have the corn in my pot, and this is a big pot. Corn in my pot, all broken up into halves, and covered with four quarts of water. Clean filtered water is what I use. You're going to be making a jelly out of this, so you want the cleanest water that you can. I don't use tap water. We have very hard water where we are and it leaves deposits on everything so we have filtered water that we get and that's what I use in all of my canning. You'll see when I can my corn um, that I use I, when I can any vegetable. I always use filtered water. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring this to a boil for about 45 minutes and then you're going to strain the juice, take your corn cobs out, which I'll show you. You're going to strain the juice in um, cheesecloth, and you need to get six cups, at least. Then you're going to need two boxes of pectin and six cups of sugar. So if you can get that ready, you can pause this, get that ready, and then move on to the next step of the process. This is a very easy to do, but you want to follow each step precisely so that you get a good result of the corn cob jelly as well as the canned corn. And I'll get to that in just a minute. On to our corn. Now, for canning corn, you need to cook it again. You want to can, you want to put in for every quart of corn, you want to add two quarts of water to your pot and a teaspoon of salt. So we have about a quart and a half. So we're going to put four quarts of water and two teaspoons of salt in our pot. And we're going to boil that for five minutes. Okay, here is the pot of your corn juice after all of it's done. This is what it should look like and it should smell of corn very, very strongly. That amber color. And here is all of the corn that I took out of the pot, ready to be thrown away. Or if you have chickens, give it to your chickens so nothing goes to waste. <clears throat> now, you need a measuring cup that holds at least six to eight cups. And I tie with a rubber band some cheesecloth around it to filter out um, the juice. You don't want any of the particles of the corn in your jelly. Or if you do, you can leave it in there. 
Um, some people do. I don't. I prefer not to. I prefer to have a nice clear jar of jelly. <clears throat> Looks much better and uh, to me it tastes better. I don't like the little particles, but that's completely up to you. So you can see it. It's kind of dipped in there so that nothing comes out. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you pour your juice in there and it will filter out and you need six cups. Okay, so all the corn is gone. You want to get your pot ready <clears throat> to get the juice in there and I'll show you what it looks like when it's filtering. Okay, now mine is pretty full. I have an eight cup holder and this is what it looks like as it filters out. And then you slowly take your rubber band off and you um, compress the juice so that you get more juice out of the filter. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. <coughs> so I'm going to start doing that and pouring it into another container where I have six cups. This is a four cup container and I'm going to start pouring it into there. Okay, so right now we have our corn cooking. And I'm going to bring that up to a rolling boil for five minutes. And we have our corn cob mix, our juice. We have measured out six cups of sugar. We have two packages of pectin ready. This is what's left of the bag um, of the juice after squeezing it. That was our filter. We have our jars ready for the corn cob jelly, and we have jars ready for our corn. I use, like to use the wide mouth jars for the corn because it's easier to get out. And these cute little jars, these are by uh, Golden Harvest, then, and this, they seal very well. I like the seals on those. Um, I like them a lot better than the Anchor Hawking jars that I get at Walmart. And these are the new ball jars. Got where you put the date on here, and they're shore tight. And these are the ones, these are the seals that are supposed to last for 18 months. I have not tried these, I've heard good and bad about them. Um, this will be a first for me, so we'll, um, we'll see if we have any failures with these seals. I've heard a few people having failures with these. Hopefully, we will not. I don't have failures with my seals usually. <clears throat> the only failure I've had recently. Um, if ever, is with the anchor hawking jars when I canned a, a jar of carrots. I had that come undone, that, that uh, came unsealed yeah, about three days after I canned it. So what I'm going to do right now, there's no gas on here, I'm going to put the pectin in both boxes, I'm going to bring it to a boil. After it comes to a boil, I'm going to add the sugar slowly and bring that to a boil and then I'm going to let it boil for five minutes. Skim off any foam that comes to the surface. You can add a teaspoon of real butter to prevent foaming if you'd like. It won't do anything to the corn cob jelly. Okay, and I will get you back here when it is at a full rolling boil after we add the sugar and show you what it looks like. And this is not a metal pan, this is a Kaflon pan. Um, it's about 35 years old, so that's why it looks like that. Perfectly good. I'll show you. Here's my corn coming to a boil. I'm going to set the timer now for five minutes. And I'm going to let that come to a boil. We're going to pressure can the corn, and we're going to water bath the corn cob jelly. And I'll give you times and weights um, in just a little bit. Okay, the corn is boiled for five minutes. We have our jars. I got three jars out. I don't think I'm going to need any more of that. This is a very small batch. Um, they're sterile. They're hot jars. And what I'm going to do... I'm going to put this into the jars.
going to show you one jar. Usually I do a hundred ears of corn at a time, so I do a lot more than this, <clears throat> but in order to do this video, <clears throat> I'm doing just um, 12 ears of corn is what I did for the corn cob jelly. Okay, so that's way too much, so we need to put the liquid in. Sorry about the filming. I know my arm's in the way. Okay, so you want to get it to an inch of headspace right there. And then you want to debubble it. So we're going to take our debubbler. I definitely need a new one. We're going to get all the bubbles out. That might create a little bit more space in there. So you have some more space to put some corn. Actually, that's pretty much how I like it. It's, oops, it's an inch. Yep, that's pretty much perfect. It's an inch of headspace. So I'm going to do three jars like this. I'm going to put the, put the lids on, and then we have our pressure canner um, with the heat up. And this will be coming. Um, this will be getting hot. This is I put hot water in there to begin with. And we're going to put the hot jars in there with the corn, and let's see how many jars I get. What I'm going to do now, we have exactly three jars of corn, which is what I figured, three pints. So I'm going to take a cloth dipped in vinegar, and I'm going to wipe the rims to get any uh, corn debris off or finger oils. These are new jars, but you would normally check for any cracked or chipped jars at this point. No matter what you can, you always want to use your vinegar on a cloth or napkin to wipe your jars. So I'm going to put the seals on them now and put them into the canner and they're going to process for 55 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure from my altitude. I'm at sea level. Now I only have these three jars of corn to can which is a shame because I've got a double decker canner and I really don't like to um, load and and have a uh, just a, a half a load or even a, a three pints to do. Today I'm going to do that. Normally I would put um, something else that processes for the same time in there. So if you're canning anything else, um, you want to check your times, uh, maybe a meat um, in a pints. Chicken would, would go with these. You can process the chicken along with these. Um, you, you always want to go with a full canner if you can, um, just to save time because it, it is going to take an hour and um, it's kind of a waste of time to just do it with the three jars, but that's all I have today, so that's what I'll be doing. <clears throat> but always can with a full canner if you can. Okay, so here we are, and I have begun to put the sugar in, and I'm stirring as I go. You just add a little bit of sugar at a time, and keep stirring it. I also have my corn going right here. It's just about to start steaming. I've let it vent for 10 minutes before putting the weight on, and the timer is set for 55 minutes for the corn, and I'll have another one set for 10 minutes for the corn cob jelly. And this is in a water bath canner. Add some more sugar. Now stir this as soon as you get it in there. I'm doing this this way because I only have two hands and I have no photographer that could do this for me at the moment. Working on that though. I just want to stir it down. Put a little bit at a time, maybe half a cup at a time, and stir it in. Make sure it's all dissolved and then put your next half cup in. Now, you'll see it getting more honey-like in 
in appearance. And that's what you want. After you get all of your sugar in, you let it boil for five minutes at a hard boil. And then you will be filling your jars, which I have here, and putting them in the water bath canner, which is going to be filled with hot water. Um, as I'm doing filling the jars, my water bath canner will be heating up. So you want hot water and hot jars to put into the water bath canner. Here goes my timer. And I'm add some more sugar. I'm putting more in than half a cup, but I want you to do half a cup the very first time that you make this, just so you can see the consistency and the difference in, as it thickens. Because it will thicken after it boils, and you want it to be a jelly-like consistency. Um, you don't need to use a thermometer or anything like that, but as you put the sugar in, you'll notice it getting thicker, and as it gets hotter, it will get thicker. start venting with our corn in it. Okay, I'm going to come back to this when I fill the jars. just want you to see that browner color coming. It gets darker and clearer as you go. the steamer and the, the pressure cooker, the pressure canner, sorry. Yes, I'm doing this at both at the same time. It's not as hard as it looks, it's just harder to videotape it while you're making it. Here, it's a darker color. Every time you put the sugar in, you get a darker color. Okay, I'm going to finish this up and put it in the jars, and I'll be back. I want to show you real quick what it looks like when it comes to a rolling boil. It does get a little bit cloudy and you do get some foam. You just want to skim the foam off when you turn off the gas. It's getting, it'll get thick. And then once you skim off the foam, you're ready to put it into your jars. Hey everyone, there we have. We have nine jars of corn cob jelly three cars, corns, cans of corn. Now I've got hard water, very hard water, so when I take my jars out it gets this, gets this little film so I've got to wipe all the jars down in vinegar as soon as they cool off. You can kind of see it. Corn looks fine. So how easy was that? We made corn cob jelly and canned corn at the same time and this is 12 years of corn. Right there. Not very much corn and you get a lot out of it. Hope you enjoy this video. I know a lot of you have been waiting on this one. Enjoy and if you try the corn cob jelly please let me know if you like it or not. It tastes a lot like honey. It's very sweet and the longer you leave it sit on your shelf the better it tastes. The more like honey it tastes. So we have some that is two to four years old that we use and it also gets darker after sitting on the shelf, but it the taste is more concentrated and tastes more like honey. It's good right now. You can use it right now. It's shelf stable because we water bath canned it. And when you open it, put it in your fridge. It stays a very long time. It stays months in your fridge, just like any jelly. Um, and it's good on any, anything. Anything you use jelly for, you can use corn cob jelly. This is also good on corn bread. Melt it at the, on the top of your corn bread delicious delicious you can use it in place of honey um, on on breads and things like that I wouldn't cook with it as honey because it's not a honey it's a jelly um, but anything you can even use it to sweeten your tea I've done that before too and it, it comes out fine tastes fine so enjoy and if you think of any more uses for the corn cob jelly let me know leave it a comment um, let me know how your corn comes out Ours came out beautiful. 
and that's only three jars. I will be doing a video. We're getting 200 pounds of Roma tomatoes Labor Day weekend. And we'll be canning that, making salsa, uh, canned tomatoes, lots of canned tomatoes, and then tomato sauce. So there you go. If you have any other suggestions that you want to see me do, please leave it in the comments. And you can also email me at thecanningnana at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and as always, please hit the like button and subscribe to see more of my adventures and get more great recipes. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.